Ford GT review. Right now, it might just be the best handling hardcore supercar of them all. The new Ford GT. we have driven it about bloody time too. It almost a year since it won its class at Le Mans, and several weeks since Matt LeBlanc drove it on the TV show. But we got a lot to get through, so let press on. The basics you e probably familiar with, but let go for a brief recap because the reason the controversial V6 is the right engine for this car, and that because the Ford GT is all about packaging and aerodynamics and driving behavior at a chassis car, not an engine car. Firstly, as road and race versions were developed in parallel, aero was critical. As Jamal Hamidi, the chief engineer of Ford Performance, puts it, we wanted downforce, but it had to be efficient downforce we didn't want to pay high drag penalties. And that's why we migrated to a fixed seating position, because that really allowed us to shrink the greenhouse and lower the frontal area. So you stay where you are in the cockpit and pull pedals and wheel to where you want them. The compact longitudinal V6 is shoved up against the carbon tub bulkhead, and the turbos that force its induction are further out under the massive aero channels. The intercoolers for the turbos are further out still, in the pod racer outriggers. Now, if the GT had used a V8 it would have taken up more space in the GT WOULD and have been able to make so much use of aero plus it would have weighed more. How much aero? How much downforce? Well, that the one thing Ford won't say, because it might allow rival race teams to calculate how much downforce the racing version produces. But everywhere you look on the bodywork is an aero device of some description. The flying buttresses that blink out rigor to central body are wing profile they also hollow and channeled intake air to the engine, which is pretty cool. The rear lights are hollow and vent air from the intercoolers. They're an underbody diffuser, splitter, flat under tray, active rear wing, plus, Hamity points out, you would never have a hole unless it feeding a cooler. How weird would it be if this bleeding edge aero work was teamed with an old school big banger V8? So it in all aluminum, dry some 3497cc V6 that develops 647 bhp at 6250 rpms and 550 pounds ft at 5900 rpms and pushes all that to the rear wheels via a 7 speed twin clutch gearbox. The suspension is double unequal length wishbones all round with inboard spring damper units. There are carbon ceramic brakes with 6 piston Brembo front calipers clamping 394 mm discs 4 piston calipers work the 360 mm rear discs, and hydraulic, not electric, power steering. 